Hey, before we get into the show, I just want to remind you guys that I do a, a newsletter every Monday. Uh, it's a sales tip straight to your inbox. It's called Sales Ammo. You can sign up for free to receive these emails by going to artofsba.com and we'll put you on the email list. And then you can start getting these golden sales nuggets every single Monday to start your week. All right, now let's get on with the intro. You've seen him on LinkedIn. Perhaps you've seen him driving around Houston. His license plates say SBA guy on the back. That's right. We have Gary Henderson on the podcast today, director of GGL at Stellar Bank. And he sat down with me today to discuss all things SBA. And I think you're going to like it because he gave really good, honest answers. And as a podcast host, I appreciate that because that's how the listener, you, get the most value. Gary is one of the most tenured directors of guaranteed government lending uh, in our industry today. He's been with the shop for 13 years and that's not easy. And he'll tell you that. In fact, why don't we let him tell you that? Because he's much better at it than I am. The SBA industry is rooted in banking and banking is old school, but that's all starting to change. You hear people talk about AI and it all sounds great, but let's be real. You and I don't know the first thing about AI, but Lumos does. Lumos is an analytics company that provides small business lenders with better tools that drive better decisions in a more efficient process. Take the Lumos business report, for example. This is going to completely revolutionize how deals get underwritten, starting with the BDO. The Lumos business report allows lenders to search for a specific business and in seconds, access all kinds of information like a business overview, industry data, insights into competition, average pricing, even a predicted expected loss, all tailored around that specific loan request. Guys, we can finally make credit decisions using actual data. Stop using what you think you know about an industry to make credit decisions and start using the whole story. Let Lumos take your small business lending to the next level with cutting edge analytics and AI by going to lumosdata.com and scheduling your demo today. Hey Gary, thanks for coming on the show. Hello, right? Good to see you. Now, just I want to get uh, make sure I'm clear here. You're SBA guy because I'm SBA Ray. There's SBA man. There's SBA dude. Have you been seeing this trend of all these these different SBA people yeah. come come out of the woodwork? Yes, I have. I, this started for me about uh, eight years ago. So I attended the University of Alabama, and, and in Texas, you can get a, probably any state now, you can get a personalized tag. I went online, I was looking for some Bama thing, and, and nothing was available. Um, but around the bank, they, that's what everybody has been calling me for, for a few years, SBA guy. So I just typed it in, it was available. I was like, okay, this will be kind of fun. And it has been, it, it's, it's got a little notoriety to it. You do have to be careful on roads, as you probably know, because it's very easily identifiable and easy to remember. So, yeah, my driving's probably much better than it used to be. That's very true. Yeah. So that's awesome. So you're one of the pioneers of the license plate for SBA. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um. So that's when you were at um, that last bank where you had started up the SBA shop? Yeah, Allegiance Bank. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You started that one from scratch? That was a yeah scratch start, my first one. So, um, but it's been a great run. So I, you know, since 2010, that's 13 years. Um, so I'm sort of an outlier, uh, not only for SBA but for bankers in general. You know, you don't see uh, many bankers at the same shop for that long. But um, you know, management's been great to me here. We've had a good program. So. Are you still there? Was it a uh, was there like a merger or a name change or something? Yeah, this uh, Stellar Bank came out of a merger between Allegiance Bank and Community Bank of Texas. Okay, so you you're you're seventeen or you're thirteen years and going at this point. Yes, right. Wow, yeah, that is a that's an accomplishment in and of itself in our industry. Kind of, I, I started out banking the old way, so I I was a teller, you know, when I, I got first hired and out of college ran a credit department, ran a note department for a small community bank here. I was there almost 15 years. And then SBA came calling. Um, and I started my first uh, SBA job at CIT, uh, small business lending. 
So I'm sure you're familiar with them. Yeah, uh, another another CIT alumni. Um, yeah. Wow. So that's I mean that's just where that's what we found throughout doing this podcast is the CIT alumni have gone out to go you know, become sales managers and um, executives at all these SBA shops all around the country. It's just crazy the impact that CIT had. Um, you were there for like, what, five years? Five years. Yeah. And I had no business being there <laughs> initially because I'd done a couple of SBA loans um, at well, St then Sterling Bank. And because I'd done, I think maybe three at that time, uh, this was probably uh, 1997, 98 time frame. Uh, 99 is when CIT called and actually two other SBA lenders. They all hit me in the same block of two months. Um, CIT had the best program and, and uh, they were, they were doing a lot of great things. So I uh, jumped on board and uh, I'll never forget my training. I uh, went up to uh, Boulder and they put me in a room and, and uh, gave me a bunch of loan packages to, to look at. And I'm, you know, just flipping through these loan packages and the, the recurring theme was there's no collateral to these loans, you know? And so I, I was still in that conventional mindset and I, I told the credit manager, I was like, where's the collateral? You know, how can you do this type of lending? You know, I'd already accepted the job. I'm, I'm in, you know? So, uh, he said, yeah, it's SBA, you know, we, we got the guarantee. And, and, uh, so I had to sh shift my thinking somewhat. And, you know, if you've been doing SBA for quite a while, you know, you, you do, you do need to get collateral and, you know, secure it, but it's not the primary uh, thought in my mind. You know, it's all you know right. cash flow based. Yeah, they used to do that quite often back in the day. CIT, they would just kind of hear of you and be like, "Hey, do you want a job?" Like, you know, it, 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 no, could you even do that today in this environment? Like, do you in your shop just find people that have done three SBA loans and <laughs> and give them a job as a BDO? Uh, not really. I'm sort of blessed. I've the, the BDOs I have been in the industry. For most of uh, twenty years, I think each of them. So we we got people in in my, in my uh, back office staff even they're they're like they're deep in SBA you know experience. So I'm really blessed that way you know in this in this shop. But yeah, I, I, that's a good question. I um I, I think SBA is a fantastic career, um, and I would encourage anyone to take a shot at it. Um, I, and just going back to when I did it, I, I just felt like if, if I was a flop at SBA, I, I could go back and be a conventional lender, you know, but right. once you, once you get bit by the bug, it, it's hard to turn, turn back, you know, I just, I can't, yeah. I couldn't go back there. No, we love it. Were you, so were you a, a BDO or a sales manager at CIT? So yeah, I was, I was a BDO, uh, uh, all five years. And then I got an opportunity from a community bank here. So I was working out of my home for five years, uh, virtual and, uh, which was, it was a, that was a big adjustment coming out of a bank that I'd worked at for almost 15 years. So yeah. And it was a sales job primarily, which as you know, most bankers do not have very good sales skills typically. And that's probably a general statement, but, um, <laughs> my, my first two weeks I was working at home, uh, this friend of mine said, Hey, um, you know, cause I, they said, what are you doing right now? I said, well, I've been kind of hanging out watching TV mostly. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, it's a, this is a sales job, Henderson. You, you're, you got to get out and sell and, you know, and go, go call on people. So I was like, yeah, that's probably true. You know? And, uh, so I just started cold calling, you know, on business brokers and, um, uh, kind of one thing led to the another, that was sort of a building block for me to get over that initial, you know, the fear of calling on people I don't know. Um, cause when I was at the bank, I I sort of had this seasoned portfolio of, of conventional customers and, you know, it was pr pretty easy, you know, so this was a challenge. Um, that's probably what drove me to stay with it, you know, over time. Did you end up being any good at it at, at, as a BDO? Yeah. I, I'm, so I wasn't a superstar, honestly, at, you know, CIT. I was a kind of a pretty good average BDO. I did, did my, my numbers I was supposed to do. Um, and I was, I was pretty happy. I, I kind of liked what was going on. Um, and then I, I got that opportunity to go to another bank. I was there about maybe four months and, and the, the management team, there was three or four, three or four of them. They, they left and started another SBA shop. So there was no management. I was just kind of, you know, not doing too much for a month or so. And then they, um, 
a gentleman by the name of John Runge. He was pretty well known in Houston SBA circles. He was kind of the, one of the original SBA lenders down here. He had started a shop at um, uh, what became Amity Bank. He called me up and said, hey, I know you don't have any management. Why don't you come over and uh, see what, you know, I think you'll have a great opportunity here. And he had tried to hire me before, back when I was with CIT. So uh, he had a great reputation. And um, anyway, so I went to work with John. And unfortunately, uh, about a, less than a year into it, John passed away. And um, so management came to me and said, hey, could you manage sales? And I had, there was an operations manager there. So she handled operations. I did the sales side. And and we did pretty well. We were kind of a pretty good SBA shop. And then uh, 2009, um, they uh, we Zion's had bought us, and uh, the the bank went through a layoff period. I was actually at a NACL conference, and uh, I, I was hearing that there's layoffs going on back in Houston. My, my team's calling me, or you know, are our jobs okay? I was like, yeah, we're, we're this is the meltdown of you know the real estate market. So I said, yeah, we're we're doing deals, so we're we're okay. And then I was thinking, yeah, gosh, I'm, I'm probably I'm coming back to Houston and they've been having these layoffs all week. I could be the last person to find out. Sure enough, I got back on a Thursday night and Friday morning, they gave me my walking papers. At the time, it was it was pretty devastating, you know, to my ego and all that. I was like, gosh, what just happened in my career? And um, a week after that, Wells Fargo called me up and, hey, we heard you on the street. You know, we'd love to bring you over. Uh, I had a three-month uh, severance package, so i I had a five-year-old son at home, so I just I enjoyed the three months, and it, it took Wells about that long to, to get me onboarded. So, oh wow, it it, it, made, it came it came out you know worked out pretty well. I stayed at Wells; it was the largest bank I ever worked for, and I'd primarily been a community bank guy coming up. But uh, that must have been rough. Uh, it you know it was just it was just different you know. But Wells had all the bells and whistles you know marketing, technology, gr- great people over there. Um, well, what was interesting is I was at CIT. We became the number one SBA lender in the country. And well, when I, when I was over at Wells Fargo, same thing happened. You know, so not not that wasn't on me, but it was just kind of interesting that you know I was able to experience that twice. You know, during my career. That's true. And, That's uh, funny. Yeah, it was kind of, you know just kind of an interesting side note. But um, after I'd been there, I think it was about thirteen or fourteen months. Um, uh, Allegiance Bank called and. Most of Allegiance Bank senior executive management, they'd all come from Sterling Bank where I'd been 15 years. So they, they all knew me. And I'd been on this SBA path now, sort of for about uh, almost 10 years. And they wanted to start an SBA department. Um, so it, it, was, it was a good fit from that standpoint. There, there was a lot of trust, you know, there. And um, so, yeah, they, they pretty much, it was a blank slate and um, uh, put together a business plan and Things took off from there. It was very slow, you know. But once we got a couple loans on the books, we were profitable. Well, this is uh this is still you're at the you know in a pretty rough period, econ- economy wise, right? 2010 ish. Yeah, as you're going coming out. Coming out. Mm-hmm. What's it like starting a new SBA division in that period? What I wanted to create was um, the best of all worlds. You know, if if I was going to have an SBA shop, how would I do it? You know, I, I had this thought in my mind for a while, so. For, for me, and you know, uh, one was we're going to hold our our loans in portfolio. So that's that was number one, you know. And I I was maybe an early adopter of that, but I, I felt like that was a better path, you know, for the bank. Um, I know on the servicing side, it's much better, um, but it just allowed me to do some things that I maybe couldn't have done. And I, and I wasn't um, I wasn't tied to the secondary market so much, you know, and the ups and downs there. Was there a secondary market at that time, 2010? It, it had pretty much, you know, disintegrated. So you didn't have much of a choice. It was kind of yeah, but that was that was by plan though. I I didn't even I didn't even want to go there. Um, and they they compensated me well enough that it was like a it was pretty pretty well balanced. I I wasn't going to miss you know uh, premium income and commissions and things like that. Um, so, but the one thing uh, the gentleman that hired me said, "Hey, I've got the perfect." person for you for back office and i said who is it and he told me and i said it's, it's not somebody that i would have chosen and i said look if i'm, I'm going to do this i've got to get my own people you know i got it's got to be somebody i trust and and, and know well so I, I hired one of the uh, ladies i worked with over at uh, amity and it was me and her for a while and then we brought over one more and was just, she like a close was she like a closer or operations yeah. person 
Yeah, she was a, a, a closer. So, uh, it, you know, it's it's me and her. I'm doing production. I, I'm under doing my own underwriting. You know, which is weird when you're when you go from. You know, but I had the underwriting background. So, uh, but you're doing your production, you're underwriting your own deals. You know, which is probably a big no no. Are you approving them yourself, or does the bank have a credit department or chief credit officer that's approving them at that point? Yeah. So initially, yeah, I didn't have any uh, approval authority. So. Uh, it was going to the credit officer, and then if it was big enough, it go to a loan committee. Well, when it, when you send it to them, they're not they're not SBA people by trade, right? So it's like when you they're kind not. of first looked at it, you're like, "What the heck is this?" Did they have yeah, that they, same reaction? They did. <laughs> yeah, they they're they're looking at it like I did when I first started my career, like Are you crazy, you know. And but I I, I had the ear of my, the chief credit officer. He, he knew that I was a pretty good lender, even you know conventionally. I uh, didn't have a lot of losses. And um, anyway, so they just trusted me, you know, and, and I, but I brought in good deals. I wasn't taking deals off the street. You know, we, we were starting to get uh, loan referrals internally. So those are higher quality credit, typically, you know, if they're coming in through the, through the uh, bank referral uh, group. Are, so why is that? Yeah. Cause well, cause a lot of them are existing customers or they're, they're known to, to the bank, you know, or bankers, you know, these are not broker deals and, Right. That was part of that was part of my business plan too. I'm not chasing broker business. We, we weren't selling, so I'm not paying brokers for you know any kind of a, a referral fee. And so that that kind of restricted me. So it made the initial run of getting portfolio a little tough. But um, once we got going, and once we showed a loan officer we could close a deal, you know, customer was happy. They liked you know the terms and everything, and in the process, you know they, it uh, it they worked out pretty well. The amount of work it takes to get an SBA loan to the finish line is insane. So when I get hit with an environmental wreck two weeks out from closing, let's just say I'm not happy. And I get it. It's the environment. The buyer should know what's going on. And there's huge liabilities for them and for us as a lender if we have to take back a contaminated property. So the SBA requires certain environmental due diligence. But I'm a BDO and I just want to close. I'm kidding. But when I do run into an environmental issue, I call Derek. Derek Azofsky is president of ORMS. ORMS manages the environmental due diligence process, so you don't have to. ORMS provides RSRAs, and they can order your phase ones through their network of environmental experts. And then when that report is complete, they make sure it was done right. And when there is a finding, they can help translate it into English and help you navigate the SBA's complex environmental guidelines. I recommend ORMS to all my friends, and I urge you to take further action and go to ORMS.com for more information. So, what, I mean, what's the secret to the longevity of this whole thing? I mean, you've been there now 13 years, and you have a shot. You have a shop going 13 years. You have the same guy running it for 13 years. What's <laughs> g- Give us the, the secret. Oh, there's, a, there's a few things. Uh one, you know, one is hire, hire well, you know, uh, hire people that you trust if you can find those people, if you have those relationships. So I had that benefit of, of knowing people cause I, I, I've been around a while. Um, one thing about our department is we've grown, um, you know, when we, when we bring on a new person, we, I'm not the only one, you know, interviewing them, of course. So I've got three or four people that I'll put this person in front of and I don't see everything, you know, um, some people can interview well with me and I'm like, Oh, this is a great person. And then I'll put them in front of them and they'll say, Oh, we saw this, this and that. I go, okay. And I trust them. So, um, we, we got, a uh, you know, one of the thing, one of our mantras around here is, you know, we don't do drama. So, you know, that's a, we mean it, you know, I, we just don't have time for it. Um, so if, I mean, I've had a couple of hires that, you know, just didn't work out. So, um, and, and it was exactly for those reasons. So, the time you spend on somebody that's sort of a an anchor to the department, you know, it's an energy suck, you know, of, of you know just time and, and money. So uh, the better you can hire, you know, the the easier your your life's going to be, and especially you know as a manager. And then you know now I've got managers in place over credit and operations, and uh, so they're they're handling a lot of the stuff that I you know I used to do all the time. So. Uh, and being able to let go is the other thing you learn along the way. You, you got to let go because it, it's too big. You know, you can't do it all by yourself. How's your management team structured right now? Do you have like a closing manager, a chief credit officer that's SBA dedicated? Like, give me the just a high level rundown. 
So yeah, I got I have myself. I'm play. I'm a player coach. You know, that's how kind of how we look at it. So I still do production. The uh, I've got two uh, SBA loan officers. So you know, we vet all the deals. You know, eligibility, meet with the customers, meet with the lenders, um, and you know, we bring deals in. Um, we we make sure we have a complete package. I, I learned that from Wells Fargo. You know, we we had to have a pristine package at Wells Fargo before it ever you know got uh, moved into underwriting. So I kind of kept that here, and and that keeps the underwriters underwriting, not chasing you know documents. Right. Uh, Smart. Yeah, you know, I like that. Yeah, it's uh it's, it's made it some efficiency there. But yeah, I have so I have a, a credit manager, and he's got uh, two underwriters with him, um, and then I've got um, my my initial hire. She's now our operations manager. She's got uh, four closers, and she's got four servicing people because um, we we did pick up portfolio from the bank that we merged with. Um, so we, um, our servicing, you know, got a lot greater. Um, and let's see. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pretty much it. And, um, it, it's a good level, level group. It's it, yeah, pretty and tight if, team. Yeah. And it's funny. Yeah. We're, um, we had this 2020 plan that we put together and, um, the, the org chart that I put together looks exactly the way it is today and that I put together, you know, five years ago. Um, so when I looked back on there the other day, I was like, wow, I can't believe, you know, it's exactly the way I envisioned it. You know, it came to pass, you know, I was like, wow. Well, that's cool. That I mean, that's a good part about, you know, having, you know, p- playing the long game, which maybe that's a good title for this episode. Right. Okay. Um, like playing it. the long game. Cause you don't see it. People, you know, they just jump for whatever reason. It's just, obviously it's so common in our industry. Um, people, I mean, if you, in your position as head of a department, uh, I, I guess some of the most important or some of the most common things I see that would kind of put an end to the whole run is like the bank just deciding we don't want to do SBA anymore, or they want to make changes and start changing things that just make the program not competitive or not, or you can't recruit anymore or this or that. But, um, I, I, I guess that, has that not happened with your your bank and the management over there? It hasn't to this point. So that that's always been in the back of my mind, right? You know, if if they're getting too much into the the management of how we're doing this, then it's you know that's going to be the time to it's time to start doing something else. You know, and and they haven't. They've um, autonomy is pretty big in our organization, um, so it's that's how I treat the staff here. They're they can make decisions, you know, they should be making at their level. You know, I, I can't, I don't want to make all the decisions, you know, so, but when they get to the level I should make them, they, they come, you know, to me, of course. So, um, you know, the, the, the bank's given us what we need in terms of technology. Most of the, uh, staff didn't have two screens, you know, so that was something we, we had early on, um, having everybody on laptops, you know, so they could be nimble in case you know, we have hurricanes here down in Houston. So, um, you know, you gotta mm-hmm. be able to, to, to be nimble. And, and they were also on a, uh, you know, providing work-life balance to me is if, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't do it, you know, so we don't pay lip service to it. You know, I don't. Um, so, um, we're primarily, everybody's in the office most of the week, but everybody has a, um, flex time. They can take a, a day and work at home. Um, and, and, um, and then they also have a, a flexible time to come in and out. So, everybody's different. You know, we've got all age groups here or generational groups. So you got the, the newly married with young kids. You got the kind of, kind of middle age, got kids right. in high school and you got the close to retirement, you know, and yeah. they they're, have more health issues. So yeah. it, it allows them to live life. You know, if you, if you, cause if you're sitting here at work and you've got, I've got, I need to get to the tire shop and do all this, you know, and if you're stressed about trying to make it happen between five thirty and six, you know, that's what they're thinking about, you know, so I'd rather free them up to, you know, take care of your business. You know, if you've got something at work or home, you need to take care of, go do it. You know? Yeah. And, and it's smart too. Cause like people, one of the more common reasons you're seeing people leave a job now is to go work from, for somewhere that lets you work from home yeah, because it's become it's so widespread now out of all the things you do on a daily basis. Um, cause I see you out, I see you, you're doing deals, you're managing the team. Like what's your favorite part? What's your favorite thing to do out of all the different functions that you're doing? Um, still meeting customers and talking through their project. Um, if, you know, if they're, 
wanting to, to do a, a second location. They've been real successful. Um, you know, they want to do a startup franchise. Um, uh, they, they want to, Hey, we've been growing. We need to build a building, you know, just sitting down and having that conversation to me. There's you, a lot. Do you actually sit down? Do you meet them in person? <laughs> yeah. Really? I, I think it's important as much as you can. You know, there's some, some people are more because of the world we live in now. They're, they're, they, they're okay with doing things on Zoom, you know, but I, I like right. if I can to get down and, and sit in front of the person, either meet yeah. them on, on site or meet here. It, it takes more time to do that. Um, but, but it, there's, there's something about it, you know, the relationship piece, um, and just being a part of that person's story, you know, um, cause I, you could, I could sit here and do deals all day and just kind of, you know, just that's right. move that's right back and forth. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, right. I mean, you know, but I, it's, I don't know. It's just, I, and it's probably maybe the age I'm at, you know, I, I, it, it means more to me, I guess. So, no, I understand it totally. I, 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 we've been talking about this. It's like, I'm almost basically optimizing for efficiency. I'm like back to back all day on zoom calls and, you know, but when you do meet someone in person, there is some benefit there, but also, you know, it takes me three hours to go drive somewhere, meet someone, come back. Right. I could have done six zoom calls. So it's like, what's, what's my goal? What do I want? Yeah. You know, am I trying to just do the, as much volume as possible? Or am I trying to build relationships that are long-term? Like, what do you want to do? Right. Yeah. yeah and the qualifier is the probably the more uh, complicated the transaction and bigger. And if it's, you know, I mean, if it's a, a bank customer that's, hey, we, he's got some deep roots here, they're going to get more, uh, you know, physical attention from me, you know, in person than, you know, say a smaller transaction, you know. Um, so yeah, and it, the the balance of time is is a consideration. So well, for them too, right? Sometimes yeah, they absolutely. don't want to go, right? Or right. Maybe meet, yeah. Meet if some like if my banker said, "Let's go meet." I was like, "I'm like what? Meet outside my house? Leave my yeah. neighborhood? What?" <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it's so sorry, some of it's feel. You know, you gotta as you're talking to people, you sort of get a feel of what what works best for them. And some of them are, you know, I'm I'm too busy. I really don't want to sit down. You know, I'm I'm here at my yeah. work for. I don't want to. I don't want to give you an hour at my office, you know, I don't need to do that. So, uh, or I don't want to come into the bank and do it either. So, um, you just kind of got to fill them out and see what, yeah. you know, works the best. Well, let me, let me ask you this, um, mm -hmm. 13 year run now, what, what's been the most challenging period of that 13 year run? Cause you've been through well, many different things, SOPs, COVID, you know, all of it. So like, what's, when you look back, what was the most challenging period? So I'm, there, I'm going to give you two answers to this. So in a, in a 13 year run, you're going to have those periods of times where it's just, it doesn't have your interest. You're, you're, I'm, you know, you're, you're, you're going through the motions, but the, the enthusiasm's not quite there. Um, and I don't, I don't know, that's just the nature of being maybe in the same, you know, environment for so long. Um, and I've, it's happened to me, I think, at least I know twice, maybe three times over 13 years, it's like, you'll have a good three year run and you're kind of like, Oh man, you know, we worked our tail off. I'm kind of, I'm kind of burned out, you know? Um, and it, it's just something you have to sort of just work through, you know, it's, um, and it, it never caused me to say, I need to check out and go do something else. You know, I just had to kind of deal with it, but yeah, it, I felt it, you know, it was like, God, coming in, is just a drag, man, you know, I don't want to do it, but and that may be just something people experience anyway in, in work. I don't, I don't know, but no, I think that makes sense. Obviously, it's so widespread because people people feel like that all the time, and then they actually pull the trigger and then just yeah. do something else. But you you don't you you stick with it and and you get through it and you you keep getting through it and and you know and, and I want to talk more about you know the benefits of doing that, but um, because you know being long being a shop long term with a kind of consistent leadership, it's got to give you some advantages. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would say so, you know, and so the one thing about our department is we have very low turnover, you know, so I think we provide a good environment for people here to want to, to want to come to work. Um, and we, and we treat them well and, you know, kind of going back to the secret sauce question, you know, it is really genuinely, uh, taking an interest in your staff, you know, um, just, making sure daily to talk to each one of them just for a, a couple of minutes. Hey, how's it going? You know, what are you up to? And, and know them about their family and what, what's happening in their life. 
Yeah. Well, it, you're it, in it, person, it so you can do that. Yeah. Yep. How yeah, do so I do that? It, it's, it's like virtually like, yeah. you, what, what am I going to Zoom call my underwriter and, and talk <laughs> about, you know, his family? That's weird. No? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, but if, if you haven't done it, you might try it. I mean, I I don't know. I, I, I'm big on personal tape for me. So when Wells Fargo hired me, I, I said, look, I'll, I'll come, but I want to I want to go meet the underwriters and the closers, you know. And so underwriting was done in San Antonio. Closing was done in uh, Minneapolis. So I said, I, I got to go see these people. You know, I want to know who I'm working with. So, um, it, and it made a difference for me because I, when I walked, when I was starting out, I knew how all the players were. At least I met them first, you know, face to face. So that that's just something that helped me. But yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, from if you're, I guess in your company, I, y'all probably have um, meet and greets or quarterlies or something like that. I would, I would assume. What we're doing next week is a happy hour, and um, I had I actually um, had this idea where we take a bunch of pictures from people that are maybe mm. not the most flattering pictures and uh, turn them into memes of yeah. each other. Oh, that's so great! Doing, I like that. Yeah. So you got, but you got to do that. We're we're doing stuff. People are innovating to try to build the relationship because it's such an important part. Like you said, you're, you're flying to Minneapolis and San Antonio to meet underwriters and closers because it is hard when an unnamed, unfaced BDO sends a package which you probably right. ma- maybe you mailed it at that time. I don't know. I guess we had to email. Yeah, I was still it, getting some it. physical. Yeah. So, so, but yeah, when you could put a name and a personality and a face to that deal, uh, you know, it helps. Uh, yeah. And so you got to now create that in the virtual workplace. Um, but you really have to work hard to do it. You guys have the benefit of being in person and it's much easier. I mean, that's how everyone grew up doing it right i mean yeah that's a big advantage another one for you guys being being in person yeah not you know being intentional about everything you know it's just so key you did ask me about um i, I told you i gave there you was kind of half the one answer you, about yeah it. you had two i was going to come back to yeah. it yeah Go ahead. what was the other thing that you think of when you talk about the uh challenging challenges it has to be ppp right it has to be so you guys got involved or- Involved oh, in, my God. in that? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, yeah, as, as a community bank, we, we were the number one PPP lender in Houston as far as we did over a billion dollars worth. It's just a lot, you know. Wow. Um, yeah. So the, the weekend, it, the Friday night that it happened, people, I was starting to get emails, you know, people, people were calling me like, hey, yeah. PPP. And um, so I came to the office on Saturday. I, cre- I was, They said, we need an application. So I created this application out of the regular 7A program, you know, it's like personal financial statement. And I cr- kind of created this grid of questions. And it was just to get something in everybody's hands, you know, All right. uh, before you're having SBA, to pop up it, overnight, like a whole to, program. Yeah. I mean, the people were panicking and then, and the bankers are starting to panic. And then everybody turned and looked at us like, uh, this is, this is an SBA deal. Y'all, you know, y'all got to handle this. So me, and I think that the team at the time was maybe eight or nine of us. And I'm thinking in my mind, oh, okay, this, yeah, we can handle this, right? <laughs> so we get into this thing, you know, they, they roll out all the improvements to the portal and, you know, the system and all that stuff. And, and I'm like, oh my God, this is just unbelievable. You know, we're, yeah, if anybody you've talked to that the hours that you spent in the, especially the first 45 to 60 days was just monumental. Yeah. You know, we're, I'm, I'm like, what do we, Somebody take care of lunch, you know, go get it, whatever, just go get it. You know, here's my card, you know, and there was no time to think about anything. You know, it's just all, we're just all constantly in action, you know, doing something. So, um, it, I mean, yeah. it ended up, the whole bank was involved in this. All, it's all the hands officers, on deck. Everybody, you know, but it broke down a lot of walls with SVA and that was a benefit that came on the back end. And, and, and to their credit, the, uh, the local SBA office and I guess SBA nationally, People were tuning in to their their webcasts or webexes, what have you, and and people got the, the word got out about SBA. It was no longer the best kept secret, you know, in finance. So um, that's been beneficial, you know, from from that standpoint. But man, when we were in it, um, and I'm I'm a pretty, I don't know, something about my personality. I don't I don't get rattled too easily, you know. And people, a lot of people call me like, God, I can't believe you're just so calm. It's like. And we're going to get through it, you know, because I, I guess because the nature of SBA, you know, you're just like, it's your, it's a marathon, you know, not a sprint. <laughs> you just got to stay with it. We're going to get through this, you know? Yeah. It, 
it really was an incredible time. I mean, yeah. this whole PPP thing, we, I'm glad we keep talking about it because I remember those first 30 days, um, where I was entrenched in it and it was just no, I mean, I'm having, I'm having, you know, slight hints and flashbacks of it now with the new SOP, but of mm-hmm. like not yeah. knowing the rules and stuff, but you know, right. building the airplane plane while in flight type of thing. But there is just nothing like it. I mean, we were the you know frontline people to to the small business owners, and which is such an important part of our U.S. economy. I mean, it's it was really cool to be able to play a part in that. Yeah, and I've I've always uh, I guess depending on who's watching this, maybe I should should worry or not. But um, I've always wanted SBA to be just right there, but not up here. You know, I don't I I don't want us to have so much exposure that I'm like, everybody's watching us, and that that comes from a standpoint of like just doing bad deals you know i want to i want to stay off you know checklists uh, you know let's keep our uh past dues low let's keep our exceptions low that kind of stuff you know so um i, I want them to know we're here but i don't want them to constantly be looking over at us like you know what's you know what's going on over there that we need to kind of hone in on um yeah and if measured we growth. did a good enough job yeah exactly um, do you, do you so, think um, if you, you know, with this new SOP that came out, um, the yeah. SBA is trying to make it, you know, easier and more access to capital and make small loans easier and stuff like that. And obviously there's a whole bunch of other things going on, you know, with the removal of the authorization and, you know, the E-Tran issues and stuff like that, which are kind of like some, maybe some unintended consequences of some of this stuff, but like, right. Do you think it would have been easier today to start? Like, if you go back to starting this shop, do you think it, do you think it was easier back then, or do you think it would be easier today to start a, a brand new SBA shop? If you walk in and that's all you know is the current SOP, I guess it's easy from the standpoint of that's that's the rules as you know them, you know, um, good or bad, you know. So if you're, us that have been in the industry longer, we're, we're looking at this new SFP like, oh my gosh, you know, um, this is monumental yeah. shift and in, in way to do things. So I, I get what they're trying to do, but yeah, I guess, you know, um, I would think it's probably a, probably an okay time to, to start, you know, SBA, at the SBA shop. As long as you can take it at face value, I feel like, um, it, it would be fine. But, in, you know, the industry and I, maybe it's our problem. I don't know. Like as an industry, like be, because the it seems like the overwhelming consensus for whatever reason is like we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing, you know, um, even though the SBA is saying, no, you don't have to do that anymore or, or it's do what you do. And, you know, what do you do with conventional? We'll do that. Yeah. And right. we're saying, well, you know, do, does this department know that? And, <laughs> you know, so it's yeah. an interesting time um, with all that. And I don't necessarily want to go down the, the rabbit hole with all that. I just got back from an yeah. SBA lending conference and we talked all about it. <laughs> yeah, we you know, we live in this fear of the, the SBA guarantee payment, right? Um is that is that gonna happen, you know, if we do everything the way we're supposed to do it. And I'll have to say, you know, we have we've had our, our losses over the years, but um for the most part, SBA is as long as you document well, um, yeah, you know, I've never had is- issues with them, you know, paying on a guarantee. You know, as long, as long as you send them a good package, I think they're pretty fair, you know, with that. So maybe the fear is a little more than it needs to be, but that's probably what keeps us good, you know, doing, having good habits, you know, in this big lending is having a little bit of that fear that they may, may not pay the guarantee. Yeah. You know, it keeps us on our toes, but I, you know, we all love it. You know, SBA is awesome. Uh, you know, everyone's stepping up and, I'm excited. I'm optimistic for the future. I think this is kind of just one of those p- periods where, uh, you know, it's just we're in this kind of state of limbo a little bit right now as we record this, which is after SOP has come out, but before whatever guidance is expected to come out. Are you the number one Houston-based lender? or, or uh, Is that right? Yeah. So we're, last year we were, um, we were number one in terms of dollars and, and we're so we're generalists here. We so we do seven A and five hundred four, um, and there's a there's another competitor. It's local community bank, and we're we're always competing with them. So um, it looks like uh, we were number one last year. They're going to looks like they're going to be number one this year, just you know by a little bit. Uh, it's friendly competition. Yeah. Um, you know. So um, well, I I don't know if I've talked about this. We had this Houston Association of Government Guaranteed Lenders that 
when I first got in the, the business, Ray, it was very competitive. We would just, we'd crush each other, you know, competitively. <laughs> we didn't talk good about our competition. And so when we created Hegel, as we call it, we, we started meeting quarterly. We had a, had a golf tournament, Christmas party, social events. And what's happened over time is, and plus we all work with each other at some point or another, you know, a lot of us have. So it, it lowered all the walls and we, everything's very friendly now. We share a lot of information, do, do trainings together. And um, I, I think that's for Houston, that's made it a, a really nice SBA environment. And, you know, as many community banks as there are in Houston, we've got a lot of competition externally, you know, um, there's a lot of SBA lenders in the top 10 list that they're not community banks here. I'm, I'm going to say probably, I bet, I bet five or six of the top 10 this year or not. They don't think they have a presence here as far as like, you know, uh, brick and mortar. Right. That's one of the beautiful things about our industry is like your, comp your competitors are your friends and everyone kind of gets along and everyone likes each other. And it's, it's interesting, you know, like you, the Hegel stuff, uh, is like Flagel here in Florida, right? It's, you know, we all get together just like we did last, last week. And, uh, it's a good time, you know, it's like, uh, homecoming or whatever, high school reunion or something. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you think about SBA like yourself, you know, you're, that's, that's one thing I always like want to be able to do is attend NACL conferences. I've met America's are sort of our regional uh, but that's, those are my people. You know, you talk about like a family reunion or a class reunion. Yeah. That's, that's when I get together. People that think like I do, they're going through the same issues that I'm having. I, they understand. I, there's nobody else in the bank and the management level that I can talk to that really gets what's going on here, you know, uh, cause they're, they're not doing it daily. You know, I want to ask you one more question and then we'll, and then we'll end it. Um, what's your big, uh, or not big, but any sort of plans or goals or, you know, anything kind of forward looking that you're looking to do in the next, you know, year or so, um, that's a big, uh, maybe goal or some sort of mission, uh, for, for your, for your group there. I'm looking at a, a software, you know, we don't, we've never had one. So we're just, we're kind of still old fashioned that way, but, um, the bank invested in one years ago and I don't, I didn't like it. So I never put the, put our department on it. So it's not very good. So I, um, it, it maybe works well for the conventional side, but it doesn't really have an SBA piece to it. Um, so that's something I'm looking to do because at some point I want to keep it the size it is, but get more efficient, you know, inside of our processes, you know, and, and pr providing that technology lift, you know, that, a, that a platform could provide. So that's, that's a big, that's, that's a, a big, big push one. I'm on right now. Yeah. Um, it's a big project. Yeah, and it, it started years ago, and I, you know, PPP sort of sidewinded it for a while, so uh, it's time to get back on it, you know, and put it in play. And I guess the other thing is just build redundancy in the team, you know, so we always have backups to backups, you know, if you, because if one person uh, is not here, you know, for an yeah. extended period of time, you, you, somebody's got to step up and, and take on that work. Would you would you cross train or have just multiple people in de those positions? Yeah, probably. You know, so like for. For closing, you know, we got four closers, so we're okay there. Servicing, probably the same, but for my, myself and my, the two managers, you know, I've got to get these other people that are, you know, reporting to them to sort of understand some of the responsibility so they can be, you know, ready to jump in if, if need be. Um, hopefully that never happens, but you, you never know. So, and myself even, I, I, I think I'm at a point now if I was out for, say, an extended period of time that... I think uh, my, my credit manager and my operations manager could, you know, handle the, the the business for a while, you know, without too much of a dis dis disruption over time. Yeah, I know I keep saying I'm going to let you go, but I just keep having questions. Um, do you bring in any of your own business or do you handle bank referrals? I'm trying to figure out how much of the production you're responsible for. Yeah, so I I looked at my numbers because I, I, I watched some of your other, your other uh, uh, recordings and, and interviews and yeah, so last year I did seventy one million. You know, that's what? A lot. yeah, you that's crazy, or right, like you, you. That was me. Yeah, yeah. Dang. So closed seventy one million. Yeah, that's that's my highest ever. You know, it's just a huge year. So the so how much burst. of that is you brought in versus internal bank referrals? Um, I probably did twenty five percent of that. I would guess. You know, extra 
25 to 30. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I've been around, I've been in Houston 40 years. So, you know, people know me and, and, uh, you know, I've got, I've got centers of influence all over now and, and, uh, which kind of goes into why I do things outside the bank, you know, cause it just, people see I'm out there doing it. And, um, Anyway, so yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's a big number. I I, I forgot. That's I didn't, awesome. I didn't I didn't know the number, you know. So I <laughs> I went back and looked. I was like, oh my god, man, seven million. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, it was it was a load last year. But um, anyway, I don't I don't know if I want to duplicate that. Do you want to get out of the production at all and just go straight management? It's hard to do both. It's two different jobs. It's tough, but um, I would tell you that. So everybody here's still a player coach and. So I don't know if I'll ever fully get away from it. I, I probably need to back off some, you know, so I can manage more. Um, but so my, my closing manager, I went back to her and said, Hey, I want to, I want you to continue to close loans, you know? So she had, she'd been out of closing for a, a little bit of period of time. And I noticed she was getting kind of, kind of getting rusty, you know? And so doing that's helped her with her team, I think be much better because she's, she's in the game. She knows what's going on. She's, She's experiencing what they're experiencing, and and then my um, my credit manager he he kind of handles um, the more tip, uh, difficult transactions, you know, uh, maybe maybe the larger deals, but he's he's you know managing you know two closures as well. So I think there's some benefit to that. You just got to balance it out so you're not getting too too much um, production work, so you can be able to manage. You know, it's it's, a, it's yeah. an interesting. No, balance. I like that because then, because yeah, because you don't want them to be having to be stretched thin. But if you're right. in the role of the those people, then you can see firsthand different issues that they're experiencing. So I actually I might have to steal that from sure. you, Gary. But I'm gonna leave it there. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really enjoyed yeah, talking right. with you. Yeah, enjoyed it, man. Thanks so much. All right, that's it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode of The Art of SBA Lending. And if you have any feedback or suggestions, email me at ray at artofsba.com. Until next time, ta-ta.